<laughs> hey, we live on Instagram. Hey, peace, everyone. Okay, hey, we live on Facebook. Peace to the gods and the goddesses. It is Goddess Kahiri Ma'at. Greetings, divine awareness. This is <laughs> Goddess. Do I address myself as Goddess? Yes. <laughs> on Ankakara Ankh. Hey. And this is Art Spirit Magic. Art Spirit Magic. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're continuing our conversation from last time. Last time we talked about the art, what um, made us artists. And you know, I wanted to add something because I, I realized I talked about the theater aspect of my art. I talked about the dance aspect of my art, but I didn't talk about um, me performing as a hip hop lyricist and oh. spoken word artist. Yeah. Which is a big part yeah. of um, the artwork that I do. And I um, actually hip hop music and becoming a lyricist was very therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. What it did was it helped me to learn how to vocalize and articulate my words to refine my expression. Mm -hmm. I was actually a very quiet person. Actually, I still am a quiet person. I was going to say. <laughs> I never grew out of being, being quiet, but um, it allowed me to find my voice in a public setting. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember my sister telling me that she didn't even knew I spoke until one day she came downstairs. She had to come get me. My mom sent her to come get me. I was at the, at the pool, mm -hmm. Lindsay Park. She came into the pool and she was like, who are these? these girls rhyming on the mic and her sister and her friends were rhyming on the mic. She was like that you were rhyming on the, I didn't even know you <laughs> spoke a word wow. and I was rhyming on the mic. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> it is interesting because some people categorize people who are introverted as shy, um, timid, but I've actually never been shy or timid. I've just been reserved and introspective. Turn that way. Sit over here a little bit. Turn more. this way? Yeah. There we go. Get in the camera, what you're yeah. trying to say. There you go. So y'all can see me. Can you see me now? <laughs> um, yeah. I, I've actually never been timid. And I've never been shy. I've just been quiet, introspective. Well, you know, and, I'm, and I'm a I'm a social introvert, whereas I'm usually the most quiet person in the room. Mm -hmm. But I'm usually in the room, right? And people usually feel my energy. And that's been my observation of myself. Well, we ended last time on beginning to talk about sound, mm -hmm. and so being quiet doesn't mean, like you said, energy is not present. Word itself is what most people denote as whether someone is loud or quiet, mm -hmm. but energy is always present mm -hmm. and it resonates and it speaks before words do. <laughs> it speaks before, you know, music or anything like that. So I've never taken quiet people or shy people or reserved people or introverted characteristics as inability, right? Mm -hmm. Or lack of, or absence of presence, right? Um, just because we're not, quote unquote, signifying our every emotion and thought or broadcasting it on our faces <laughs> doesn't mean that we don't have a lot going on underneath the surface. And so that also, to me, would go to putting people in a box if you are talking, if you are speaking. Okay, well, all your words and your now activities and actions 
are now your box, right? So I always say it's what we actually decide to do at any given moment. You know, when you have multiple activities, multiple talents, multiple aspects of your character and personality, whether you're a leader, whether you're a meditator, you know, there's all different parts that are sometimes vocal, sometimes activity driven, right? Lots of writing. All of these things are still our spirit mm -hmm. and our soul interacting. Mm -hmm. And that conversation is always loud in my heart <laughs> and in me. So whether I'm talking or sharing what's going on with someone, I feel like I'm always engaged in public or in a setting where this is me, whether I'm by myself or whether I'm with other people. And I, I command my own presence to be authentic, right? Whether I'm able to speak in a setting or if I'm just present. Mm -hmm. So it'll either be in my dress or in, excuse me, it's a little chilly, in my dress or in my, um, you know, my wardrobe, I would say, or in just different accoutrements, different ways in which you adorn yourself, all of that speaks. You know, all of that to me is expression of spirit. And within art, the vocal part of it is actually the part that makes you feel really committed. Like dancing is private. You know, you don't, you, you one has to interpret what you're doing. You're not telling them directly. Well, there's a private side to dancing. Well, meaning what I'm doing Mm -hmm. I can interpret it one way and it looks another way and someone can feel it and interpret it any way they want. But words tell about, you So exactly. the experience of yeah. how, how you experience dance is private, is what you're saying? It's, it's open for others to, to interpret. interpret. Okay. But words, voice, mm -hmm. sound, you know, words to sound make it more solid and clear. So we're always communicating and we're always being artistic to me, whether that sound aspect is there or not because I'm still dancing even when there's no music. Mm. I still I hear music, that. right? Mm -hmm. I still hear music even when there's none playing. You can start a song right in the middle of it because you hear it and mm -hmm. it's not. So sound is not always audible, right? Mm -hmm. But it's always reflected in its constant reverberation because the song was played once. It's always in the atmosphere and so one can pick it up from memory from having heard it and it not be playing right then and there and it's just as if it were playing in your head so there's an aspect of us that is always vibrating and able to pick up spirit in art and I guess that's where I was going with that <laughs> Let's talk about spirit. I would like to know, when were you um, aware of the art of spirituality? Mm. When did that happen to you? The art of spirituality? Mm -hmm. Where you felt like you are actually um, doing the work as someone who is interacting, observing, and working in harmony with spirit. I'd probably say when I was younger. Okay. What was a hallmark experience for you? Um. To me, observation of pain and sadness on other people. Mm. And to me, being able to make someone smile, mm -hmm. make someone laugh, change their mood, change their focus on something that brings them a lighter energy, a, a lighter weight to their spirit, and... So that was me as a child, you know, just being 
I would probably say getting a whooping and running and making faces and making my mom <laughs> laugh while I was running from her whooping. That to me was like an art of spirit because <laughs> I was able to change my fate, <laughs> mm-hmm. change her mood, and it, it was on a regular basis. I got out of probably half of my butt whoopings, which I probably should have gotten half of those and more, but <laughs> in order to be right, I needed more get right. You needed more get right. I needed it some sounded, act right. It sounded like you learned very early <laughs> how to alchemize the energy in the situation mm. through laughter, mm. which is very... Yes healing modality yes and that's something that transforming you, yeah it's very transformative and that's something that um you are really gifted with i mean like last night yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this woman here <laughs> having almost peeing in my pants <laughs> she was <That's> hilarious <laughs> anyway we, we're not gonna talk about what we was laughing about i don't even remember <laughs> Because the comedy be like that on the spot. It is not even something you can plan or prepare for. It's like whatever the funny is, whatever the hurt is, there's a funny in it. Whatever the the situation is, there's there's a a lesson in the truth, which makes it funny. You know, um, that was actually a part of our ritual. Mm. And um, some people may know that I... I was a, a priestess in the Asarset Society. It's a um, a Pan African uh, religious community, and is 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 based in uh, Kemetic ancient Egyptian. The Metaneter is central. Yeah, nature study of nature. And part of the ritual, the we after you purify the space, you always start off the ritual with the opener of the way so in our rituals it was sebek and you know other rituals it may be um issue or um but when sebek came out with the person who carried the energy of sebek that energy was a jokester trickster mm. laughter um energy like papa legba like pop yes papa mm-hmm. legba and what the energy would do was it would address the obvious and how so how obvious it is mm, mm-hmm. and how ridiculous it is that we think it's so that we're so serious about it okay. like you really you really you you're really serious about that right yeah, you, and you, that you, and, you and it just it. <laughs> and Sebek would just unveil unwrap how ridiculous all these ideas and contrived um, notions in our heads are Mm -hmm. and just dismantle it. And you're like, oh, I was really, I was in the illusion. Yeah, I was really, I was, that was really ridiculous of me. And just break down the barriers to get to um, truth, you know, and, and that's where, and then, and so then, so then once um, Sebek, did that through laughter, making mm-hmm. fun and light of everything, then you are now open and receptive to now go to what the main focus of the, the ritual was because now the, the way is open. Even that energy that you just brought in alchemized the energy that I just I had because you might can feel, I mean, I felt a little flat. I felt not, you know, just a little distracted because I can feel a prior conversation that I had. And I can tell the person is still in that conversation, but Mm -hmm. I've moved on in myself, but I'm like, okay, I'm sensitive to my spirit and to that connection and to send great energy and just bringing in Sebek. Sebek, yeah. And, and, yeah, the, that's my energy, the laughter, the joking and, um, the mood change, the attitude, Mm -hmm adjustment to whatever it is I want it to be. But I said, I'm going to stay in that. I'm going to stay right there. I'm not going to make myself be anything or anywhere that I'm not. I'm going to stay in that, in the energy that I was in. And so that just (laughs) moved it right on out because why am I going to um, stay anywhere? Right. You know, or leave that, they may be in that conversation, but I don't have to. 
so I can open the way to what I'm actually living, which will actually serve me and serve them better. Because now I can go ahead and send energy that is supportive and still present, but it isn't, well, it isn't just receiving the energy coming to me. I'm actually countering it now mm -hmm. to make it more neutral. And maybe they'll feel that too. Right. You know? They will. Yeah. Because we're all connected. The interconnection. Um, because of that oneness, they feel it. Yeah. And recognize so, yeah. it and let it transmute them and let it move on. Because that is really the, like. It's like the hundred mon monkey, although it is not a hundred you know. monkey. But the concept of when um, the energy gets manifest and intense in one area or you know a pattern is created one area how it catches on you know yes and because of the the connection we're all we are all connected yeah and, yeah 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 and i mean so you doing the work for you is also for others it's for the whole and the collective well that's very good because when you said that that made me remember one of the pieces that the person said in the conversation you know that they were even su they had a suicidal thought you know mm. that their situation was so intense for them so yeah let's let's definitely <laughs> send them that Sebex so energy <laughs> in terms of alchemizing that thought you just said mm -hmm. right this person is thinking about what is there to live for well, why the fuck did you come here in the first place if you're just going to leave? Mm. Mm? So that's the attention getter, huh? Why did you come if you're just going to leave? You're going to quit now? Mm. So you so you just have to do it all over again? The problems oh. ain't going to go away. The problems going to go away because you quit? Mm. You're going to have to get your attention even more so next time. How about that? And just because you are... In this physical, um, so-called misery, you think when you leave, that's going to leave you? Mm. Does it leave you in the spirit realm? If or does it make it harder to come out of it? Wow. So we, we think we're getting a reprieve. Some people may think they're getting a reprieve by escaping. When you just... Digging yourself deeper into a hole. Yeah, this is the actuality when you actually hit that point where you can die. That's when you are a candidate for rebirth in self. Because mm. you are done with that ego. You are done with your conditioning. You are done with your familiarity. You are done with your patterns and all of your juggling and pretenses to keep everything in appearances in a way in which the illusion says you should it should look like this and feel like that and sound like that and when it doesn't you think you're crazy but when you're not satisfied by all of these carrots and you can't even function trying to obtain or maintain all of those illusionary carrots you want to kill yourself mm. i love how you did that <laughs> I love how you just did that because um, you took dying right from a negative context and connotation to a positive you alchemized it so yeah it is about dying so you you want to die die yeah die really die. get rid of all of that <laughs> shit that old shit that way of living die to that that person let that person die yes if you want to die, do what she said. Yeah. What she said. Because the whole purpose of it being unbearable in any way for anyone down here is to awaken self enough to say, I'm something different than this. Mm -hmm. And when you've done your best, put your best forward, you've done all you can do, you know all you can know in the situation you're in, you, it's you. It's one self. Not this world because someone else is going to get right on the train you just got off of, sit right in the seat that you just got out of because they haven't gone through all of their paces yet. But now that you have, go ahead and let it go. Mm -hmm. 
all of your juggling balls have dropped. You're going to pick them all back up? No. You didn't want those balls anyway. Mm -hmm. Debt, fear, worry, opinion, judgment, work, jobs, <laughs> mental conditioning and pre-trained th thoughts that we think we have to live. So then the enabler who wants to assist, prevent, make it better. I don't feel like that person in this situation mm -hmm. because the energy that I came with was not in the same worry or fear or blame or guilt or judgment or any of that for the person it is still like you are God stand up be magical don't take any crap say yes to yourself don't keep running the story of where you are now run the story of who you know you are it's time and it's okay to say F all of this stuff and drop it and that was the voice in in her head and heart but that's not the voice you would ever, to her that voice might have meant kill yourself Mm -hmm. But the voice really meant die to all those things you're falsely accountable for, mm -hmm. that you're falsely responsible to. Responding, we are response able. We are account able mm -hmm. for our own true account, which is our soul, mm -hmm. which is the thing that wants to be the clean slate. Be here really as me, not be here as number 57258 going through the same assembly line mm -hmm. as number two five three five seven, seven. and number two five <laughs> three five six <laughs> <laughs> right yeah which is so much like oh i'm gonna do it better than six and 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 nine <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna do it better because i'm eight i'm seven mm. it's the same trap and and i am here i mean i feel like anyone who knows me i feel like anyone who's met me mm -hmm. they met me because i woke up like I'm not in your life, in someone's life, so that they can be right in my presence and not know what is in their own self. So in some instances, I can back away and say, well, I'm not here for everyone. Everyone has the same thing within me. Mm -hmm. And then other people are right here and they bring their situation to you and you're one with them, but yet you're not accountable for them you're mm -hmm. not responsible to them right. one must be accountable to self to response self, yeah. able for self you, you know but uh, you're supporting you're energetically there i i've actually experienced um the use of the threat of killing oneself as a manipulation tactic before oh really i mean yeah, because somebody wanted something from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Similar situation. Um, they, you know, they mentioned the idea of, you know, suicide. Hmm. I'm not saying that's what the situation is. I'm saying right, I, I but, personally experienced that. Right. And at first, it I felt for it. I was like. I was like, whoa, like, because the person even asked me, have I ever thought of suicide? I'm like, no, I've never thought of killing myself. Yeah, neither have I. Um, and, and from a spiritual practitioner um, perspective, especially from on the in, indigenous side of um, spirituality and many African um, spiritual practices when you commit suicide you are a dishonorable ancestor mm -hmm. you're a troubled ancestor you're like a dark deceased ancestor you're living in darkness and you don't get the same funerary rites right you 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 don't go on you definitely don't go on the ancestor altar mm. right you different people say different things um you get cast in some some cast those bodies out into a part in the forest where people where they say you don't go 
right? Wow. So it's yeah, it's a real taboo mm. to to do that. And I started, you know, expressing those things that the, from from what I knew about that. And that person was like, they, they want to hear that shit. And and then I was like, I started articulating all the reasons why the person would want to be alive, right? Right. And, you know, they later said that it was very, you know, beautiful what I expressed and they, they appreciated what I said. Because they can't see it. But in retrospect, after certain events that passed, it felt like the person was using it as a tactic because they wanted to then... Because what happened later mm-hmm. was, um, can I buy can I borrow a dollar? Oh, right. Because <laughs> that's gonna help me not kill my. Yeah, that's gonna help me not kill my. <laughs> yeah, that's See, gonna help me not kill me, myself. Me and Sabrina <laughs> right. <told us. laughs> yeah. right. So, so I don't kill myself. Let me borrow a dollar. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm. Can I have five? Does that mean I'm going to be reborn? That was the number they asked for, and they were kidding. They were kidding. (laughs) The five dollars turned into five hundred. But anyway, we just working with numbers right now. But that's how entities, energies make you feel as if you have no way out. Mm -hmm. And maybe someone is thinking suicide. Someone is else thinking something else. Mm -hmm. It's someone is using any of those to, well, I'm going to go rob somebody. Well, can I have $5? You know, the bottom line is self-love. The top line is self-love. And the process is to self-love. That is what all of the answers are wrapped up in because it shakes loose all of the other energies that are pathways that are not leading you to yourself. They're actually taking you further or detouring you or they're extra lessons because (laughs) when someone is at a place where they're manipulating for any reason, even if it's not to that extreme, Mm -hmm. they're still looking for something outside of themselves as an answer or as a proof or as a validation or verification they're not validating the God in them. Right. They're not validating. They're not seeing um, that they are the answer. They are the hero that they're looking for. But I want to hear a little bit about how you came to be the the magical person that you are now. You told me you told me how am I else how magical? <laughs> you told me a few, a few things about your your spiritual journey. You mentioned you know five percent nation. You mentioned um, the you know the church. Can you just elaborate a little bit about your spiritual journey? Right. My spiritual journey is real clear and simple to me because it was spiritual before I knew what spiritual was. Mm-hmm. So to me, those aspects are group and institutional mm-hmm. and external but my what spirit, were the institutional well the church the word of god fellowship with dr frank summerfield which taught that you were god you know can you go in like um sequential order well like, that's where i was going but okay. then you asked what those institutions were so you said the five percent nation and the church so before those external entities or so you did it start with the five percent nation no. okay that's what i'm with? saying my spiritual experience is started outside of any, well, inside, before and without any external prompting. So to me, um, my first spiritual experience was when I told a lie. (laughs) Okay. Tell me about it. (laughs) Well, I'm not going to go into the whole trauma, but... I will keep it a secret. Yeah, okay. (laughs) It's in my book and, um, you know, (laughs) my friends know my story. Um, But I told a lie at three and a half years old. Mm -hmm. To me, to have the presence of mind, to know that you wanted to avoid a situation, Mm -hmm. you were in a situation that you need not tell the truth about, and that you had evidence of a situation you had no reason to justify. Mm -hmm. So 
I told a lie mm -hmm. at three years old. And to me, that was the beginning of a presence and awareness of self-preservation, self-protection, self-awareness, and an alternative way of being present, not just the child that listens to exactly what the parent says. Mm -hmm. But now I had a consciousness in me that said, mm -mm, no, I'm not taking that path. <laughs> I'm going to choose my own path. And my path is telling me to um, not tell you this truth. <laughs> By the way, Jennifer says she loves your book. Oh, <laughs> what's up? Yeah, that was definitely channeled. Absolutely. And so being on that path, which again, led me to be very positively manipulative as a child, because I would always try to cheer my mom up. Mm. I would always try to ease her stress. Mm -hmm. I would always try to mitigate things that would take her off of her joy. Mm -hmm. And to me at three, I started singing at four. Mm -hmm. So that was very much knowing how to be in tune with the energy or the, the atmosphere and the mood. So my spiritual experience stemmed from that presence. And uh, my, my father had passed at three, transitioned, and he stayed with me. And at nine, my mother and her best friend's sister, who was a medium, had me burn a candle to say goodbye to my father. Mm -hmm. So that let me know that there was something going on with me that I thought was regular mm -hmm. at age nine, from three to nine, which was me talking to a being, right? Me talking to an energy, a protective love, you know, a imaginary friend or whatever it appeared to me. But I did not know that I was even being spiritual at nine until they had me burn a candle to say goodbye to my father. Mm. So then that made me take even an extra present note of what was going on with me. Because at three, I didn't know that my higher self had told me what to do, right? Mm -hmm. But that was like a spiritual contact. Then at nine, there was a spiritual contact. And then by 12, I was listening to my inner voice, which had told me, um, that I didn't have to get old, I didn't have to get sick, and I didn't have to die. And to me, that set a secret pathway inside of me that I set out to prove that, that mm -hmm. you don't have to get old, you don't have to die, and you don't have to get sick. Mm -hmm. And so having that in my heart and head and as an intention, every time anyone would say anything about getting old, getting sick, or dying, I would always say, I don't get sick. I don't believe in getting old. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to die. Mm -hmm. And I would say that either inside or verbally, depending on who the person was. And I would not take any counter conversation, no matter what conversation was going on. So to me, this was building my spiritual body. You were, you were not accepting that program. I was not accepted. Very good. I was on my own track. It was, I was connected very early, even if it was negatively slanted, it still was my own connection to self. Mm -hmm. which allowed me to see my choices. So to me, that was my spiritual path, which then when um, at 15 in high school, the energy that I resonated with, with not getting sick, not getting old, being powerful and all of that was the 5% nation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I grew up going to church, but not um, growing up in the church. There are people who, who grow up, and they know the positions, they, they stay in one church, it's a family. We went to lots of different churches. Mm -hmm. And so it allowed me to, again, be individual mm -hmm. and not be in a program because each church had its own program, so mm -hmm. nothing ever took. So I've always kind of been on my own track spiritually, which allowed me to magnetically attract the spiritual organizational experiences that would lead me to myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So you talk about your early experiences, then you brought it to the 5% nation. And, but what transpired after that? I would say throughout, I gotta hang now. I would say throughout all of that, I always knew that whatever said, whatever I said happened mm -hmm. and that scared me. So I had a very responsible tongue and I had a very deliberate way of speaking. And I was still on a secret mission to cheer up everybody, to make everybody 
happy, mm -hmm. to always speak words that overrode a path that was not desired. Mm -hmm. So I always would be very, very hmm, deliberate and present. And I would say the magical aspect that first came to me was being on the subway, going to high school, going from 125th to 135th was the local. So you had to get off at 125th and get on the local from the express at 125th street and take the local to 135th street. And it was a, it was a local that went 10 blocks. So it was, it went very fast and it was always rocking, rocking, rocking the old trains. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a, a can, it was one of the colas. I don't remember which one it was, which is good. Um, <laughs> so it could have been Pepsi. Could it have could been have been Coke. Coke. Yeah. Um, but the could box. C and C. No, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> wasn't R C and none of that stuff. <laughs> so it was just going back and forth, and I was like, "Oh, I wish this can would just stop." And I mean, I was rocking to and fro as well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I just said that can better stop, and that can. I'm still rocking. <laughs> and that can <laughs> stopped. And I was like, oh, how shit. Did, how did you feel inside? I said, oh, shit. <laughs> I know that I'm powerful. I said, okay, that's what I'm talking about. It better had stopped. Mm -hmm. That's all I, and, and I just went on about, yeah. Doo -doo. I knew I was special because I always felt and had that sense. But that was the first connectivity of thought to a physical item that responded. Mm -hmm. And then from then on, I was even more deliberate about even my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And that's why my book is titled, Please Think Healthy. Because your words, that's the last thing. You've already meditated on it in your heart. You've already thought it. These are already things. So by the time you say it, you're just sweeping <laughs> the dust that's already there because you've created it already. And so I just became very, very aware and intentional, but not in my highest, highest self, still in my physical walking the terrain, being a regular person, just feeling very supernatural, mm -hmm. feeling very not isolated, but very highlighted. Like, like I didn't know something, but I had something. I felt like I had something. I didn't know it. Though. You know, what I find special about that experience is less about the fact that you stopped the can, but it was the awareness. Because that the can anybody, should stop. Cause, yeah, because <laughs> most people who have a soul, right? We, we, we have access to these powers, but we're not aware of the impact that we're having on our experience. So what I, I, find, I find so special was that the fact that you had the awareness, like, because you didn't just chalk it up to, oh, that was just a coincidence. Oh, um, you know, or, you know, just laughed it off. You were like, oh, shit, no, I just stopped. I can. Yeah. Like I did I did that shit. You, <laughs> there was you no owned one it. else on the train. And it was like, okay, power show up when other people are not there to absorb your your shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or stop mm -hmm. you from being as direct mm -hmm. with your power, with your intention. We know these words now, but at 15 and a half, 16, I just knew. And I didn't feel it was angels. I didn't feel it was any other thing moving it for me, a ghost or a spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, I was almost like, how did I do that? But I knew how I did it. Mm -hmm. I was like, just sure it should be done. Mm -hmm. I was like, you have to stop. But even if it was angels or if it was ancestors, or all, these are all extensions of you. Yes. Right? Because everything that is outside of us is an expression of what's within us. Cause if we have that understanding that we are one, right. That we are God and, and, and we are all fractals of God. Then if it was an angel, if it was your an angel that works for you, that stopped it, it was still you. Yes. 
and to bring that up and to make a point is even now, even though we have Orishas, we have all of the entities and energies that we can work with, known, unknown, gods, ancestors, I still don't put anything in between me and what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I don't use any name. Like even every time I would say Jesus or Christ or Buddha or what have you, I would still feel like I was Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm the son of God <laughs> mm-hmm. and I'm taking this power. So it was always a, an embracing of who I was and what I was and finding then any tool that would show that type of power. That that um, energy was the strongest power that I knew mm-hmm. that would say be healed or say do this and it, it did it so I took on the most powerful energy that I knew which was Christ mm-hmm. and it turns out that that does lead you to yourself right. so because even if you did use whatever name uh, uh, a deity orisha mm-hmm. um, a veda um, it's still it's you still, <laughs> you're calling on those aspects of yourself mm-hmm. Right. So if you're calling, if you're calling on Sebek or Papa Legba, you calling on the open of the way of the trickster in you, you're calling on that energy within you. If you're calling on Heru or Jesus, you're calling on the, the savior within you. Right. Exactly. As, as above, so below, as within, so without. So if it exists outside of you, it also exists within you. So you were calling on you. Right, whether you chose to call these specific names or not, is as how I perceive it. Yeah, that's a higher understanding in hindsight. Mm-hmm. And in hindsight, I'm like, wow, because even to like now, if you don't recognize it within you first, you're still gonna be outside of yourself in the end. Because the power is still going to rest for that person only in that deity or only. But when you know that you can use any energy and that it is you and an extension, then you're in your your God power. Mm-hmm. You're not. When you know. Right. When although, you know. although it does work for many people who don't know that. Who well, still, exactly. They call, they call on Jesus. They may not be aware that they are calling on the aspect within themselves. However it's not in a position of empowerment when you are in the perception that it is something outside yourself. Yes. Because what that can lead you to is being in a position of victimhood. That's when people start cursing God because of what's going on in their life. They start um, blaming everything but themselves. Mm -hmm for what's going on to them exactly. and around them, not identifying that they are the creators and co-creators of their life. Everything that is happening is because they allowed it to happen. It's a series of choices and thoughts and patterns that they subscribe to that led to them to what they are experiencing. Nothing in life happens just by happenstance. It's because you allowed it to happen. And when we call on those outside energies before we know, it may never lead you to you because they are all energies and entities that incarnated or the stories of them on how they handle being here to let us know that these energies, these powers are within us. Mm -hmm. And that is where the true power lies is in that knowing and that switching of focus Mm -hmm. as to, like you said, when you think it's something outside of you doing it, it never connects. To me, it's a detour and it takes longer Mm -hmm. when you have anything in between you and the intention. Mm-hmm. You have to go through something, which means you go it a, may a not middle come man. back. You, gotta go, you right. feel like you got to go through a middleman. Yeah, to, and that mystery and, is in that. And middle then there's man. an excuse why you don't, why you can't go to the middleman <laughs> because maybe you ain't got money to pay the middleman. Right man, there, you go. Or you, 
you know, judgment, whatever. Position. Oh, yes. Right. And that slows down your knowing that it is you in the first place. But it's your damn self that right. gets you out of the situation because <laughs> you created it in the first place. Mm. Mm. Yes. Um, Jim, um, Jen says, nobody to blame but ourselves. Facts. <laughs> Facts. And if we are experiencing something that is perceived as so-called negative, and I, I don't personally subscribe negative, positive, to negative, good, positive, bad, because it's, it's it just all is. It all serves yeah. the further. But if you are perceiving something that is so-called negative, detracting from something, or something that you are perceiving pain in, then you need to start seeing. Well, why did I call this into my life? What is it? What is it? Something that I need to release out of my life? Right? Is there something that is calling attention that needs attention in my life? Right? I mean, like when you stump your toe, you what is it saying? You stump your toe. Your 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 foot represents mobility, going places in life. Are you on the right path in life? Mm. Okay. Or mm. if you got let you get laryngitis. Where in life are you not speaking your truth? Right? When these things happen, our, our body and our life, life is an oracle. Meaning, the things that happen to us and around us are modes of communication. For are we on our path? Mm. Right? Right, in the direction that we had intended to to go into, the, the contract that we made or the agreement we made or what we signed up for before we came, that this is this is what I, I'm coming to earth for this life to to focus on this because my energy needs to be this. Or I, I just wanted to experience this. Sometimes the pain is what you came to experience. Maybe you you decided you wanted to to experience the pain to fully enjoy the pleasure cuz how sweet is the pleasure if you never felt pain so when you wake up to the idea that you had a choice to come here it means to be born by your parents into this physical body to look like me, mm -hmm. to be this being. I could have been anywhere in any nation in any part of the world, but I chose these circumstances, this being, this DNA, this genetic structure, this to guide myself to where I would need to be within myself, whether those experiences were desirable at the time, undesirable, positive, negative, however they were perceived, right? Mm -hmm. They were still the impetus, the catalyst for the response or the awareness or the next phase because everything happened. If it happened, it was for you, not to not you. Not to you, <laughs> right, because you're the one who created it in right. the first place. Right. <laughs> so sit in it. There, there, there is a blessing in the curse, right? And a message. And a, and yeah, a message. That's the blessing. It's, it's the <laughs> lesson. The blessing is the lesson. Mm -hmm. And the so called curse, right? Or the be mooring. Or the be lesson. The be lesson. <laughs> the be lesson. <laughs> I love the wordplay. The be lesson. All right. It's, it's, so, it's, mm -hmm. uh, you, you shared your, um, your path to, um, your spiritual path, right? Um, just to share as well, um, uh, for myself, I was actually, so both my parents were psychic healers, um, my, my mom and my Which dad. Which you chose those parents. And I, I chose them, yeah. Um. And what was interesting is that we always 
we choose parents that we at some point actually um like in our teenage years we find like we have to find our own we gotta we gotta fight against them mm -hmm. and go a different way like my mom she was you don't she she would never say new age but for lack of a better term, she was very new agey and the her spiritual practices, you know, she's a Reiki master, master of meditation, astrologist. Um, she works with every healing modality. Um, she's a diviner. Um, but one thing that turned me off was that she, um, she found herself in a lot of spiritual circles that were mostly European people. I didn't see a lot of people who looked like me. And that's where I felt like a, a splinter for myself. And that's, that's why I gravitated so much in my um, early adulthood um, when I went to college towards Asara Set because mm -hmm. Asara Set did everything that my mom was into, but it was black people. I was like, this is phenomenal. I was but like, and, and they're vegetarian. They do all, yeah. And that there was another, there, there were others doing this. Yes. And and I was also, you know, I, I did check out um, the 5% Nation a little bit. I did check out um, Ima Misa, mm -hmm. uh, Malakazi York, because he was in our backyard, yeah, right? Because we were in, right there. Right there. Um, you know, I used to read the books. My mom thought I was going to join him at one point. She mm -hmm. felt like she called herself doing an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did check out um, Nation Hilarious. of Is Islam for a bit. I didn't, I didn't like how women were represented um, in those circles. Uh, but um, Asara Set was my home for quite a quite a long time for like over 20 something years. I, ra mm -hmm. I actually raised my, my whole, my family, my children, um, in the SARS set until my ancestors were like, okay, that's it. It's time to move. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, yeah, it's time to move on. Um, that must've been a difficult message to receive in the sense where the knowledge, the information, the activities, the wisdom, the practices are so, true <laughs> and you know foundationally ancient yeah but yet still manifested outside of yourself still part of a group still part of an institution still part of an organized religion mm -hmm. so i would say that part is the part the ancestors like you know it's time to move from because it was it, it was a crutch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it became a crutch um i it was time. It was a cocoon. Mm. Protective, a training. That was like one of my first cocoons, right? And it was time for me to now, like, fly. To, to, to I felt like my ancestors kicked me out the nest to go fly. <laughs> they were like, okay, you got a lot of grounding here, but there's a lot of reliance because that, that the, there was a tendency to, um still rely on other people's you know the hierarchy so this is what this person said the following the, the protocol yeah. and following this you know the these these um you know these statutes and you know things that were and this is the way to do it this is how you do oracle readings and this is how you do this and it was and there comes a time for someone practicing anything where you learn the basics of everything. Like I learned the found, I learned foundational. Well, my my parents laid down the yeah the first foundation, the arena. Yeah, the she they you know my parents laid down the first foundation, and then in that setting, it. Um, it was more, it was crystallized, right? And, um, 
but it came to a point where I had to learn now to be the improviser, to, hmm. to, 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 to now be the jazz aspect of my spirituality. That was I know, the question I, was I know the foundation. Mm -hmm. Now I have to cut out the middle because there was, even though in a sad set, it was the understanding that you are God and your connection to God. But there were still things in place. I'm going to show you how to be God. <laughs> right. This is how you be and God. And there was still, yeah. <laughs> and so when my ancestors had this and they, <laughs> I'm not going to say what they said to me because <laughs> it, it sounds like, it, it would sound like, you know, blasphemy for some people. But basically they were like, blank that blank <laughs> and move on. Mm. And when they said that, those were not my thoughts because I didn't even think in those explicatives at mm -hmm, that time. Mm -hmm. So they knew what to say to make me get move. your attention. They yes. knew. <laughs> More than get your attention. <laughs> they knew how to get my attention. I was like, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. And I'm, you know, I moved on. I worked, I started working with um indigenous spiritual elders. Uh, uh I worked with um um, Chief Amachi of Petu, Petor Brawl. Uh, I worked with um, Chief Montana. Um, both um, connected me to work with spiritual elders on the continent okay. of Africa um, and uh, in like Northern Ghana and Benin and um, a few different, you know, um, spiritual practices where the magic is real. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I've seen some shit that they, that they do. Um, and that I was exposed to, and I was, you know, trained with that. Let me know that magic is a thing. It really is a thing. Um, and and then after working with the indigenous, and, but I, I had actually had this conversation and I put the intention out literally that I wanted to take the middleman out of the way mm. and have a direct connection to source to be able to no, get to the place of knowing without having to do a reading or, and sorry, I said you have to do a reading and take the reading to the priest or take the reading to, you know, the, the, the king of priests, you know, and to, to verify, validate yeah, the validate, <laughs> you know, to validate the reading. Um, mm. and, and even though I, I still use oracles, right. I still use um different modalities of um divining eventually my ancestors brought me to the place and opened my mind to get to the point where i could speak directly to spirit speak mm -hmm. to my soul mm -hmm. which is the <laughs> the the work that we do, like the, the like like with the dream, right? The dream journeys and the soul journeys, and and you, you, you help me master some of the, the, the breathing techniques that we take them into, you know, opening that the portals, just just intuitively you you and I connecting and working together, mm -hmm. you know, as as you know, spirit buddies, we, um. That yeah, because we have that opened two up sides for us. of the coin. Like me out here on my own without the information and being intuitive, mm -hmm. and you having all of the information, and then now coming into your this is how I, this is how it comes to me mm -hmm. coming into your own. So it's like open from your side out of all of the set order practices and absorbing and sponge ready for me to fill in technical you know aspects the formal names of things that i may do innately mm -hmm. and it has been we've been doing this for a minute now i didn't even realize yeah because as we started 
tapping in with meditation and going into the portal and the breathing, mm-hmm. these things would come to me and you would confirm them for me. Like, yeah, that works. And I'm like, yeah, it does work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that it's been See, a, the, you know what's so beautiful about um can I call it like your gorilla style of spirituality <laughs> where 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 I came from more of a structured, rigid, many different structures, right? This is, you know, of this is the way to do it type. Um, it's harmonized, right? Um, because when you introduce certain things, I can, it allowed me to identify it. Hmm. Yes, put, put the category. And actually put, yes. and, and, and identify the term and label it like mm-hmm. look this is what we just did right right it's a real sign it's real <laughs> it's real yes and um <laughs> it's 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 just been a beautiful journey um getting to know self and what we're capable of doing you know validating ourselves validating. <laughs> confirming ourselves and all of our engagements and interactions with our entourage that we come with, becoming mm-hmm. aware of all of our natural, ethereal, energetic tools, mm-hmm. resources that we are already equipped with. And I'm putting names and confidence on them because I don't have to move on from a situation thinking there's more. I know that that skill or ability or process is enough i don't need to know five ways to do it or ten you know it's like you're not seeking oh let me try buddhism or let me try hinduism or let me try you know all of these things you're like okay doesn't matter which arena you use it in you're in the arena you have the tools and you are the creator like jen says honoring ourselves yes yeah yeah acknowledging the god within the god the god is I like to say God is. God is. I, God, I, is. <laughs> God is, right? I, I really like putting that term in there, right? The the God is part of it because it also breaks up the conditioning that um, we have been taught in the programming that God is this masculine energy, right? And Yes. And only father and it's only masculine. Right, only. Right. And it's not. It's the masculine and the feminine. So don't forget about the the divine feminine aspect of ourselves. The creation station. Right? Hey. 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 The creation hey. station. Hey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the beautiful part. That's the How, and interesting, okay, because how the what I experienced my line of spirituality was very masculine, hmm. and yours was more fluid. Yours was more feminine. This is just my perception of yeah, how you express, because, right? And and compared to my experience, mine was very ma- and and all my the 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 main teachers besides my mother, right, were masculine, were males. And it got to the, and that's another thing that when I, when I left, I, and, and after I worked with the, the indigenous, um, like a shaman, almost. spiritual elders, yeah, mm-hmm. the, the, you know, some tradition, they would call them shamans, um, and their tradition, they, they were called spiritual elders, spiritual elders, um, they were, most of them were male, they, they, although they did, um, they were two female, um, spiritual elders that I worked with on the continent. Um, but the, I would say the first spiritual elder that I worked with outside of my mother on this soil mm-hmm. was um, Yeye Luisha Tish. Now, she is the author of Jambalaya. I love her name. <laughs> Yeye Jatisha Tish. <laughs> Latisha Tish. No. Yay, yay, Luisha. <laughs> Lu- Luisa. Tish. Honor. <laughs> she wrote the book, yeah, yeah. Um, Jambalaya Luisa. Spirit. Uh, if you don't have that book, that you should get that book. I'll, I'll, I'm going to let you see the book. You're going to let me see the book. Not read <laughs> the book, but see it. See? 
See, this is what it looks like. You're going to have to get your own. <laughs> Pay the lady, okay? See, this is what it looks like. She put sweat equity, equity and some good stuff in, the, in those books. She can get on my list. <laughs> uh, Title again? Jambalaya. Jambalaya, okay. Yeah, you, you might think it's a Creole book, but it, it is a reference to um, New Orleans. Well, jambalaya just a, means mix no, things, yeah. aspects together, right? Mm -hmm. Mixing elements. Um, but yeah, so the, the second part of my life has now, on my spiritual journey has been towards embracing the feminine aspect of spirituality, which is, which started to usher in as I was writing the book, mm. Magical Woman, 10 Steps to Unleash Your Divine Feminine Powers. I first, at first, I didn't even know I was going to write a book like that. I thought I was going to write a book on birth, on joyful birth. But weren't you going to write a book on psychology even earlier than that? Oh, I was always going to write some book. Yeah, because I remember we discussed it one time. And I was like, was she throwing me off about Magical Woman because she thought I wasn't maybe there yet or something? Because I was like, well, what, I was probably what, gonna, what, it was probably <laughs> on um, um, the... ADHD because I, you know, that's I, what it was. Yeah. Yes. I was like, it was like very, a, very a, technical. Um, it was not spiritual. <laughs> it was <laughs> at all. Yeah. The, like the first aid guide to AD, ADHD. Right. Something like yeah, that. exactly. Which to me was like a psychological book. Cause that was, right, our, because that's a, that that's was another field. aspect of exactly. Yeah. We both studied that. Yeah. Um, which again is part of the training ground. Cause it still put us in arenas to study all the aspects that we are mastering. But you, it, it's amazing how it's all connected. Yes. Because with, you know, mentioning ADHD, autism, all these things that are, la that are labeled within the realm of special education mm -hmm. have a spiritual aspect to them. A, ca right? a spiritual it, causing, a and those labels are just the symptoms of spiritual activity actually of spiritual power mm. right mm. because they all everything has a that's just the the adhd the autism you know what we associate schizophrenia with those are the, those personality are the, bipolar thank you <laughs> those that those are the shadow aspects mm -hmm. of a frequency of a genius that has spiritual powers and they're the neural pathways in which the signals are traveling that are anti or different from the conditioning program. And this, these people are set in their spiritual path internally. And so to travel onto another path, it, their signals do not come into this realm the same way. It's like, no, they're not going to conform. So, yeah, I, I mean, and because each one of those so-called labels, um, the the positive expression of those things is a genius and a and a um, a strength that um, that has healing aspects of it, you know. And and this is these this is the work and the conversations that I'm having with um, Naomi. Um, now, 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 um, and the the UK, she's on it. She she's the on fire it. Fire Phoenix goddess. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. She she's on this topic, and um, I know she's going to to write some literature on this, and um, and develop this, and 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 make some major waves in mainstream on how to to work with um these neurodivergent um personas to identify them properly because there's a lot of mis misdiagnosis well, based going on, on the american and medical association just to even have any excitement any ability to Think for yourself, these are outliers and they have 
medical and so terms you, and to say and that medical terms so you can medicate them. exactly and put them to exactly. sleep right? so as we begin to override but, they're, but these you terms, know what they're putting to sleep they're putting they're putting to sleep um powers because a lot of these people who have these attributes and all honesty mm -hmm. and ancient indigenous societies the elders would have noticed them as when they were younger mm -hmm. and noticed that they actually are on the path to being a spiritual practitioner because mm -hmm. they're able to see the spirit world mm -hmm. or they're able to hear the spirit world mm -hmm. or they're able to move you know whatever their their clear is right whatever their clear audio clear right whatever their clear their clairvoyance they would initiate them so that they can use their 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 power wisely to identify and know how to use it and how to be a benefit to society to be right. the medicine um, person for the society to be the 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 seer you know the oracle or whatever w role they were supposed to play and these roles are already filled so you have guides and a community of operation right and, and, and those styles in, in, in those intact it, society exactly in those, whereas exactly. in western society it's been really um fragmented right we've been cut off from these <laughs> natural ways of 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 being and, and knowing who we really are and what and our abilities well in all societies we've been put on paths and tracks that either do or don't lead you to yourself, like the Kabbalah. And I was looking at that and um, listening to a lecture with Seven Bomar, um, Secret Energy and Inner Understanding. And one of the aspects that, I almost forgot what I was gonna really say just now. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> um, Brain fart. I don't know. Uh, no. Rewind. Was, re okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a nice pause there because that's that's some digestible um, knowledge to chew on. These labels that um, we have put on people, we even putting people in a sane asylums and drugging them and when they actually have abilities to heal society we feel that we, we're trying to fix the fixer right well the choices also that the individuals came here as in this time and period when you said the way in which the brain works is a healer but it's also a preventer of illness mm -hmm. and the illness is the soul going through the things here that you didn't come to hear the experience mm -hmm. so they've chosen to stay in a realm in the immaterial and deal with this society in this way that shows us they're going to come out as themselves mm -hmm. because they never had either the opportunity or the responsibility mm -hmm. right to engage in all of these mundane practices, all of these mundane rituals mm -hmm. that take you from self. Right. And that was the thing. The, um, the 22 pathways, the 22 major arcanas, are not only just pathways, but they are actually pathways that we take mm -hmm. and live on mm -hmm. and may or may not because only one of them leads you back to yourself. So you got to find in... You said only one of them leads you back to yourself? There's only one path to yourself. They and all lead you back. All paths lead you to yourself. Some, some take longer take than longer. others. Right, but we know the ones that you may... We've seen many people go off the plank. So it's <laughs> like, if you follow the way of them going off the plank, you're probably not on the pathway in that pathway. Because mm -hmm. in every pathway, there is a pathway to yourself but it's all perception because what it's about awareness awareness and what you came here for awareness that it is, that it is you and I was saying that to say that we can see 
that it's not just inner journeys, but we can see when ones are on a path, there's always a fishing line that you can throw in to say on that path, make sure you see this mm -hmm. because that in that path is the secret doorway to lead you to yourself in that path. Mm -hmm. And when you, what I found on some of the pathways is people get distracted by the organization, the institution, the operation, the mm -hmm. order itself, and they don't go inside. Right. to get the fact that exactly. I'm on this path to get something and get off it. Exactly. Right. That's why I had to leave. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was what I wanted to get out so that we see where we are and see that it isn't just a name, a title, or a place, or a people, or a thing, or institution, or organization. It's a pathway mm -hmm. that we're on, whatever it is. And within that, there is a way to yourself. And no matter which way, like we said, all pathways lead to yourself, mm -hmm. but they don't always for each individual. <laughs> and that is what the need for all of the clearing of the way for most of us, new practitioners, new spirituality, um, age of Aquarius beings, we're clearing that pathway and surety for ourselves, knowing that everyone here made a choice. And that our spiritual obligation is not to be in groups or institutions or any or this one sameness or one way, but to actually allow others and and permit others mm -hmm. to have their unique path mm -hmm. and their unique way and their unique way on the path. Mm -hmm. Because no matter if it looks desirable or undesirable to an outsider, it's still the choice of the one being mm -hmm. to experience these experiences to bring one to self and one on the outside does not know what is going to bring another to themselves on the inside. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I feel, yeah, I, I actually feel really good as to where the conversation went at this point. And I feel this is a good um, place to pause with that and let that um, marinate. Put a pin in it. Pin, pin. <laughs> <laughs> leading, you know, leading to ourselves. Because that's where the what? The magic is. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the magic is. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's. we got to tell the good people where we're going to be. On this Saturday. Yes. We done magically wound ourselves up in the arms <laughs> of wonderful serving beings that are here sharing, enlightening, giving tools and tips and signs and tricks and information. We are going to where? We're, go we're going to <laughs> Nicholas Bookstore in the historic Restoration Plaza. They carry your books there, don't they? Yes, they carry my yes. books. They they sold out at the at the moment. So when I go, I will bring some more. All right, I'll all bring right. some signed copies. <laughs> so you have my um, signed copy if you if you caught one at Nicholas Bookstore. If you catch me while we're vending, I might give you a discount okay. off the regular price. We'll be there from so, six to nine. Six to nine. Um, check them out. We I tag them in this video, but just look up Nicholas Bookstore and Restoration Plaza, and you can't you can't miss it. <laughs> it's they it, it, it's an awesome place. There's historic events that happen there all the time. Um, Goo gobs of black owned businesses. Um, the Billy Holiday the Billy Holiday Theater is the anchor there which yes. supports artists off Broadway and um, um well, shoot is in Restoration Plaza but in the bookstore itself mm -hmm. they sell oh amazing items there um we're going to be the there with our amazing items hey. <laughs> <laughs> yes we 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 are actually getting our, our inventory up for this Saturday we have um uh, what I'm what we're both looking over there at all of our really? inventory. <laughs> if you want to check them out, <laughs> yes, if you're building our inventory, I'm gonna do my Vanna um, Black. <laughs> <laughs>
And over here, we have <laughs> bracelets. So I'm, yeah. wearing, I'm wearing a few of them. Oh, show uh, those rings. Yeah, we're, I'm working with um, uh -uh, show copper. Show the other hand, too. Oh, God, show the other hand. <laughs> I'm working with copper and semi-precious stones. <laughs> right now, I have on amethyst and um, jasper. And we have citrine and unikite and mother of pearl and what's that taurine what you have on here too um this is oh these are different um colors of jasper jasper mm -hmm. um i have rose quartz uh we got we got the healing we got, we got copper in our aspects copper bracelets and and leather it's all things that help conduct and maintain and keep your energy yeah deliberate and flowing on the frequency the healing vibration yes yes so come check us out we're going to be vending our books and our wares and um it's hosted by king, king simon. simon yes <laughs> and guess who the guest speaker is the one the only lloyd strayhorn yes numerologist the master extraordinaire. extraordinaire i have his book i took his course mm -hmm. <laughs> and um the good sister kufunya is gonna Kufunia. be yes goddess yes. kufunya is there and, and many others there's gonna they're hosting a um cosmic alignment workshop yes so, check out eventbrite because the event is on there which should be posted we have that right um well we'll put we'll tag that as well yeah yeah, we should tag the the link to that and the video. And anything else? We're here. I mean, we did what was to be done because I'm transmuted. You know, we've set out some great pathways, some newer pathways for ourselves mm -hmm. and energetically into the construct. Um. It helps me solidify what I'm doing on this planet. I'm showing myself what I'm doing on this planet. I'm breaking into the mundane day and say, this is truly who I am in all ways. No matter what I'm doing, this is the aspect and this is where I'm coming from to do it. So like to me, I love the way I'm allowing spirit to guide me in my true choices where I'm not robotically living my life mm -hmm. in a way that looks right mm -hmm. or looks um, explainable. Like my saying is I don't complain and I don't explain. Mm -hmm. And within that allows me to do what I need to do, transmute, create, build, and set a clear path for myself that I want to do here. And that's what, to me, everything before these moments were for were to train me to be individual to train me to be one with others mm -hmm. to train me to be mutable mm -hmm. transmutable transformative all and nothing at the same time jennifer said okay <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all we are out until next time yes um make sure you follow our youtube channel like and subscribe hit the hit the bell so you get the notification all right when our, our episodes are released all right love y'all peace Mwah, divine love awareness and magic yeah.